I'm Dan Kent, the pastor here at Capital Christian Center in Bismarck, North Dakota. Thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. We hope this service is a blessing to you in your walk with Christ today. Well, welcome to church. We're so excited that you're here. We're so excited to be here gathering together. Uh, we get to come together and worship the Lord. That's so cool, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. If you're, if you're here in person... You are so welcomed to be here. We're, we, we've prayed for you, and we're so excited to be here this morning. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome to. We, we hope that you are staying safe and healthy as well, and on YouTube as well. Uh, if you're watching this later, bless you. We're so excited to be here. Let's stand and let's begin with a word of prayer and jump into some worship this morning. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you that you've brought us here this morning. We thank you that... You're here, and you're going to do some cool and exciting things, God. Just encourage our hearts today. Help us sing to you as one voice, God. Help us worship you with all that we have. We can't do anything but by your spirit, God. Lord, be in this place. Talk to us today. Encourage us. We give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Technical difficulties, still, still God is good, right? God is always good all the time. So let the church say amen. Here we go. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, all my failures, I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. Sing it out. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, amen. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day, yes, Lord. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness. Your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom, now your freedom is all that I know. Sing this part out. The old man knew Jesus when I met you. Here we go. Let's sing it out. You called my name and I. Oh my 
Church, just worship him, lift your voice, sing to him, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere, the atmosphere is changing now. Come on, press it. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all. Overflow, overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. The atmosphere is changing now for the spirit, for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence, the evidence is all around for the spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Come on, church, just worship it. Use your own words to worship the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your spirit, God. We need your spirit to fall afresh and anew on us, Lord, and in our hearts, Lord. Empower us again by your spirit, God. We worship you. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord. Let heaven invade. 
How many know when the Spirit shows up, things begin to change, amen? Things begin to change. Miracles happen. The Spirit speaks, changes lives, amen? Reveals Christ as Lord. Yes, Jesus. Sing a miracle. We thank you for your spirit, God. We thank you that, that your spirit, that your blood, it breaks every chain. It breaks every yoke, Lord. We invite your spirit to be present with us today, God. Be in this place, God. Help us worship you. Help us be instructed by your word. Help us be encouraged by your word. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Open our ears. Help us do what you're telling us to do, God. Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise. You're so worthy, God. You're so good. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us this morning. You may be seated in the house today. Yes, we're so thankful each and every one of you are here with us this morning. If that's online, uh, we're still grateful we can use that platform. But um, we're thankful our doors are open, too, and we get to see your faces. And so um, if you grabbed a bulletin on your way in, um, if you haven't, you can go ahead and pop back and grab one. Um, we do want to let you know about our Connect card that we've started. That's just easy for you to fill out your information, especially if you are new. Uh, we want to get connected with you. And so, um, but it's also for our regular tenders, if you can just let us know that you are here today and fill that out and then um, drop it in the offering box on the way out the door. So go ahead and fill that out. I uh, do want to make mention of our in-person gatherings we have during the week. So we have our adult Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And our youth group, uh, the Rock Youth, is meeting here in the sanctuary at 7. And we have um, our ladies uh, fellowship group uh, meeting Thursdays at 11 and our men's uh, Saturdays at 8.30. So we've got lots of opportunities for you to uh, still gather and, and maintain our social distancing still. Um, but yeah, so all of that information is in your bulletin and then um, just make sure to fill out that Connect card. Thanks, Jenna. I appreciate you. Jenna is smarter than me. She is more organized than me. 
She keeps me going the right way. I could get lost in a circle. She's my navigator with the Holy Spirit as well. Jesse knows that for sure. I get lost, and I've taken him home so many times. I still don't know where I'm at. Anyways, but thank you, Jenna. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Yeah, <laughs> we're in North Dakota. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah. This morning, uh, we want to honor our graduates. If so, if you're graduating, you know who you are. If you would just come down here, stay six feet apart just so... I'm just, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but come down here, and yeah, there you go. Yeah, good job. Great job. Great job. But we just want to honor you guys. We have, I said you guys as well. I normally say y'all. I'm turning into a North Dakotan, I guess. So we want to honor you guys. Uh, we have some cards, but the first, we're just going to tell you a little bit about each person. The first one we're going to start with is Kaya. She's going right here. Kaya Paul, raise your hand. Give, yep. She's going to be going, attending to a BSC, and she's going to be transferring to Moorhead State University to study gentle, to be a, a dental, I said gentle, didn't I? Uh, dental hygienist. She's going to be a dental hygienist. So give it up for Kaya this morning. We have a card for you. Oh, I'm sorry. And next we have Becca. Becca, raise your hand. Give it up for Becca. She's graduating as well, and she's going to be attending NDSCS in Wapaton for her two-year RN degree. Give it up for Becca. <laughs> Next, we have Cassie right here, Cassie Wolverton. Give it up for Cassie. She's going to go all the way to Virginia, right? All the way to Virginia to the East Coast, from the cold to the East Coast. Virginia's still kind of cold, I guess, but... Uh, she's going to be attending Mary Baldwin University, and her major is going to be in secondary education. She's also going to be a part of the women's cadets, correct? And that's in the, the Army? Yep, that's going to be in the Army. So, yep. Get over for Cassie. And last but not least, Samuel Kraft. Give it up for Sam. Sam is the man. He's going to be going to BSC to get an AA in Applied Science, science in Graphic Design. So he's, he's very creative in that way. You'll see a picture that he painted a little bit later today. But what I want to do is if everybody would stretch out your hand. I'm going to begin to pray here in a second. But before we pray, let me tell you that this time has been very odd, right? This whole social distancing time has been odd and, and students. A lot of times they didn't even get to say goodbye to their teachers, their coaches, their, their administrators, their friends, because they didn't know they weren't going back to school. And we might think that that's kind of young to think that way or something like that. But in reality, that's where they're at. And that's where their parents are at as well. So just hold them up in prayer. And if you see them throughout the week or if you see them here today, just bless them. Give them a air high five. We did, a, we did a church greetings video and there was like an air high five and handshakes in the air and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, just give them a greeting and bless them because they're going on a new, new journey that none of us have really been through because we've never been in this pandemic or anything like that. But bless them and let them know that you love them, that Jesus loves them. And uh, just pray for him as well. So let's pray today. Lord, we praise you for your, for your goodness and your holiness and your righteousness, Lord. We thank you for this generation, God. We thank you for Generation Z, which these high schoolers and middle schoolers, God. We thank you that you are using them in unconventional ways. We thank you that you, it was prophesied at National Youth Convention in 2017, 2016, that, that you would use them in unconventional ways, God. Lord, we thank you for that. Pour out your spirit upon them. Bless them in their coming and in their going, God, as they just keep you first in everything that they do, God. Reveal your spirit to them. Reveal your kingship to them, Lord. Just guide them and direct them in everything, Lord. Let them know that you love them, God. Let them know that we love them as well, Lord. Help us be a blessing to them, Jesus, as a church and, and as a family, Lord. Lord, we thank you for it, Jesus. And we give you all the glory. We declare the mind of Christ over them, Jesus. Lord, just guard their hearts as they step into this new season. Guard their minds. Help them run after you. Put a hedge of protection around them, God. 
Help them run after you, Lord. Use them. Speak through them, like the prophet Joel talks about. The Spirit of God being poured out upon everyone. That's something that I hold on to, God. We thank you for that. Jesus, just be with them. Be evident in their lives, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate you. You can sit down. Pastor Dan. so much and congratulations and it is just so good to see each of you this morning and good to be able to come together and worship the Lord together you know the Lord has given us the church as a gift and the church is you God's people and the building is where we get to meet and what a blessing to have a place to meet and a blessing to meet together and we just encourage you, you know, we're trying to follow the social distancing guidelines, but kind of like an airplane, if you've got to roll with more, more leg room, that seat costs more. <laughs> uh, just teasing. Um, somebody said, oh, I thought that's because I could take a nap. Uh, but you practice you, you can see we've got the uh, guidelines, social distancing guidelines. Actually, I'm tired of hearing that term myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, you just do as you feel comfortable to do. We want everybody to be healthy and safe. And uh, so, again, it's so good to see you today. And I realize some are still worshiping at home, don't feel safe to come back yet. That's fine. And if you want to wear a mask, you feel free to do that, too. I've got one that has a mustache on it. I almost <laughs> wore that today. But we're going to uh, sing a song now. It says, I shout to you, Lord. You are my Lord. And I just shout to you and give you praise. And you can feel free to stand or sit. Uh, we'll let the worship team get ready. And let's just sing this song of praise together to the Lord. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you all of my days. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, that you're our tower of refuge and strength. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. And uh, this is a youth ministry emphasis day. And so I've asked our youth pastor, Chad Hammontree, to give the message. But before he does, we have a video that highlights uh, some of our young people that participated in our district uh, fine arts uh, meeting this year. And we'll show that at this time. What's up, y'all? Pastor Chad here. I want you to know that we have some of the greatest students in the world. You have some of the greatest students in the world. What you're about to watch is a fine arts highlight, so sit back and get ready to cheer your students on. Capital Christian Center, Bismarck, North Dakota. Hey kids, welcome to The Rock. Today our big idea is, in God, I am strong. When we say in God, you say I am strong. In God, I am strong. In God, I am strong. I am strong. Nobody likes you. Oh. Your shoes are so old. Oh. Your hat is dirty. Your shirt is so oh. wrinkled. You don't even have a backpack. Even Dora has one. Oh. We even read books, you nerd. Oh. Oh, what are you doing there? Why are you on the floor? It's dirty. I haven't cleaned there yet. That bullied Brittany bullied me. Reading books is awesome, and the Bible is the best book ever. Thanks, Janitor Steve. I feel stronger and more protected already. If you are ever going through a hard time, just know that you can put on the armor of God. Yeah, anything the enemy tries to throw at you won't work, because in God, I, I am strong. strong. In, in God, God, I am strong. Hi, I'm Devin Covert from Capital Christian Center, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about taking action. So first, let me tell you a story about taking action. Your relationship with Jesus will fall apart if you do not take action for him. And so uh, 14 through 17 says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. Father God, I pray that you help us to take action in our everyday life. I pray that you give us the courage and the strength and the faith to take action for you, Lord. I pray that you speak to everybody's heart Everybody who's listening about what action they need to take, when they need to take it, Lord. And I pray that you do this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Wow, what great presentations. We're so excited for what God is doing here at Capital Christian Center. So many talented young people. Let me encourage you, if you didn't do fine arts this year, let's do it next year. Let's discover, let's develop, and let's deploy the gifts that Jesus has given us. So like I said in that video that we made a little while ago, if you saw it, it's, it's floating around YouTube and Facebook a few times. But if you haven't seen it, that's our Facebook, or excuse me, our Fine Arts highlight. It was on Facebook, things like that, like, that, like I was saying. But uh, we're so proud of our students that, that did District Fine Arts this year. Um, the thing is that we need to encourage students to begin to discover, to develop, and deploy the talents that Jesus has given them, right? Fine arts, when I was growing up in Florida, it was crazy. There was so many students, but I loved it. I loved going and standing in the back of the, the sanctuary at Calvary, at Calvary Church in uh, Orlando, and it would just be hot and it would be sweaty. It'd be, I think my senior year, there was 4,000 students, and it was just this crazy thing. But coming here and seeing how much ministry-focused things are, in North Dakota, it's so amazing. There it was a competition. Here it's focused on ministry. And that's something that is so cool. Uh, five of the eight, <clears throat> excuse me, five of the eight entries that, that we had this year advanced to nationals. So that is so cool that they advanced to nationals. The superior with invitation. But we know that nationals is not happening this year, which next year it will happen. There will be more students that, that go to fine arts, that do well in fine arts. And we're so excited about that. I know that the Lord is paving the way for that. But also what I want to share is that kids lesson that was shown at the beginning. It was just a short bit of the kids lesson. Uh, the students in Jenna actually wrote that. And they won merit for the state of North Dakota. That means that the first place, best ministry avenue, if you will, uh, in the communications division of children's ministry. So that's pretty cool. I'm so, I'm so happy and so thankful that some of the students just got out of their comfort zone and just went all in for Jesus and started using the gifts and discovering and, and developing and deploying the gifts that Christ has given them. But today I get to preach and some of y'all were like, if I would have known that, I wouldn't even come today. But <laughs> I want to thank Pastor Dan and Miss Laurie and the board and the church and everybody for allowing me to speak. Uh, it's such a joy. I mentioned this in the first service, but there was a time when I was terrified to speak. <laughs> Straight up terrified. Um, I would sing in front of people all the time, but it took me till I was 20 years old to preach my first message. I wish I would have done it during fine arts, but I sang songs and played music, all that stuff, but I never preached, which I would have. But my first message, I was 20 years old and my parents were ha helping at this church called Glad Tidings Assembly of God in Jacksonville, Florida, after my dad had gotten off the road playing music with the Blackwood Brothers Quartet. And uh, we get there and they're, they're helping them and they're like, hey, you want to preach this week? And I was like, who are, you, who are you talking to? I, I can just sing. That's all that I do. I can just sing. Uh, but So I had 14 pages of notes that night. 14 pages of notes, and I preached for 11 minutes. So that's crazy. I was like, what in the world do we do now? And like I mentioned this in the first service, but I just, I was like, maybe if I pray for 45 minutes, we'll, we'll just go home. But anyways, uh, so I preached for 11 minutes and 14 pages of notes. I still have a lot of notes because I, everything that I write is in 24 font, but I can <laughs> preach a little bit longer than that now. But I'm so excited to be able to speak to you this morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to be able to do that. But as we dive in this morning, I want us to recall what's happening in the last few months. Recently, we've been in some difficult but also different times. And with all this COVID-19 and social distancing, and we're tired of hearing that word, right? Social distancing, social distancing, social distancing. We're getting tired of that, right? Hearing that all the time, everywhere we go, the grocery store, at school, we can't go to school, things like that. But it's forced us as a church, as a body of the body of Christ in the world to change a little bit of things, to, to begin to, to, um, to put unconventional ways to reach the gospel into place. Unconventional things. And many churches already had an online platform, 
But many churches didn't. And just like us, we began to launch an online platform where we can preach the gospel and have Bible studies online and have small groups and have a youth group online. And yes, this has been a different and difficult time, but something that is amazing is that there are so many people in the world that would never feel comfortable coming back to church. They would never darken the door of a church because of past hurt, maybe sin, I don't know, maybe medical conditions. Something like that. They can't get out or they feel uncomfortable or anything. But something that we have to know is that now they have a, we have a platform and they have somewhere where they can listen to the word of God. Church can be brought directly into their home. Where they stay all the time, the spirit of God can be. During this time, it's gotten me, gotten me to think about a few things and about being obedient and about being creative and, and finding ways to reach students and young adults and, and young families and empty nesters and seniors as well. Something to understand this morning is we have to begin to reach every generation in unconventional ways because we're living in unconventional times. I mentioned this when, when I was praying, but I think it was 2018, 2017 or 2018 that at National Youth Convention, it was prophesied over the... Generation Z, that they would reach people in unconventional ways. Like never before, they would take the gospel to places that had never had the gospel come to them. And that's our duty is to empower each person of every generation to be able to do that. We need to find creative and maybe even unconventional ways to bridge the gap and spread the, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ because... Because that is the power of salvation, right? The power of God unto salvation, as Paul puts it. But we should never be ashamed of that gospel. We should never be ashamed of following the Spirit's leading, even if it seems unconventional. And now is the time that we step out and step up into the boldness of the Holy Spirit and begin to draft and graft unconventional ways of ministry and tell people about Jesus Tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ and what he has done, that he is king. The title of my message this morning is Share It Unconventional. That graphic is a little bit unconventional, isn't it? I was talking to Brad this morning, and he was like, there shouldn't be a dash in unconventional. <laughs> but there is. <laughs> It's unconventional. It's unconventional. But many times we hear the word unconventional, right? And we think it's bad. A lot of times we think it's bad or, oh, that works, but it's a little bit unconventional. Maybe we shouldn't do it because nobody's ever done it before. Every generation is unconventional. Every generation is unconventional. The camp meetings that happened uh, be right before the, the second great awakening here in the United States were super unconventional. So unconventional. Uh, because during that time, right after the American Revolution... There's a, a state of depravity. I know we, we have a nostalgia when we look back at that, back at that period of time. We're a new country and things like that. But the war had wrecked everything. Churches were burned down. Farms were burned down. Houses destroyed. The economy was in shambles. Pastors were killed. And it led to depravity. People thinking they could do whatever they want. Even in our newly found freedom. Though we were supposed to be a country that was founded on godly principles. It became a nation of depravity. And records in the church tell us about this. We have to study though. That's something that I love history. And we, we, we need to study history so that we know where we came from. So we know where we're going. As well, but people were turning to rational thinking more than they were turning to God because of this newfound freedom. There were so many people that were not Christians at Yale University, and that started off as a theological institute that they thought Christianity was going to be extinct in 30 years. That's here in the United States, right after the country was founded. That's crazy to think. We're supposed to be found on godly principles, but even then, the people forgot. The people forgot, but the Spirit of God came upon some people and they started doing these things called prayer unions. They started doing these things that they called prayer concerts and, and these camp meeting revivals started to pop up. 
everywhere. And then they ushered in the second American Great Awakening. And along with it, people were healed and, and people from every color and from every creed were, were coming together at this one place called Cane Ridge. It became known as Cane Ridge Revival in the hills of Appalachia. And what once was a place to break the law because Appalachia was lawless during that time became a place of praise and a place of seeking the face of the Lord and a place of seeking the spirit of God. What looked unconventional was actually supernatural. I said all of that this morning to, to say this and to set this up that what I want us to do today is talk about the mandate of sharing the gospel, even if it seems unconventional. Share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. What I want to do is be, begin by reading the great commission that Jesus gave us in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. That's not our main scripture, but that's the main premise of our message this morning. Let me read it to you. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of what? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And surely, surely, not surely, sorry, sh surely, <laughs> I am with you always to the end of of the age. I'm with you to the end of the age. That's Jesus talking right there. That's Jesus talking right there. Let me flip through my passage right here. Okay, here we are. Sorry. Um, and also in Mark, Jesus tells the people to go out into all creation and preach the good news of Jesus Christ about himself. That means in every situation we preach the good news. That means everywhere that we go, we preach the good news to the grocery store, to, to the car dealership, to the, to the YMCA if you work or lift at the YMCA. Praise the Lord that it is open again. And if anywhere that you go, preach the gospel in your everyday life. Everywhere that you place your feet, place the gospel. Be Christ's witnesses in everything that you do. The heartbeat of this message is to encourage us to figure out some unconventional ways in your own life to preach the gospel and yet have it be supernatural. Let the Lord speak to you at the same time. And, and what I want to do is tell about a time that one of Jesus' followers did that very thing. Did an unconventional thing, but it was a supernatural thing at the same time. He was meeting people's needs. He was using words. He, he heard the Lord. He obeyed the Lord. He went, he ran, and he continued. The passage that we're going to be jumping into this morning is Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. So if you would, turn with me to Acts chapter 8, 26 through 40. I'm reading on the NIV this morning. It will be on the screen as well if you don't have your Bible or your smartphone. Verse 26. Now... An angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, is what my version says, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. Unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. It's just talking about Jesus. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please. Who is this prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? 
Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as they traveled along the road, they came to the water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, this is the crazy part. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. That's crazy. Took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again. But he went on his way rejoicing. Verse 40 says, Philip, however, appeared at Ashdod and traveled about preaching the gospel in all towns until he went, reached Caesarea. So, that's a long passage, but this is about a year after the resurrection. This is about a year after the crucifixion. This is about a year after the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven and his followers are getting accustomed to doing life without Christ, a life that is without their follower being right here, right now, with them. And this is this person that we're talking about is Philip, right? And this is not to be confused with Philip the disciple. This is Philip the evangelist, the one that pre preached and told people about the good news of Jesus over and over again, which he will be finally known as Philip the evangelist in church history and church tradition. But where we see him first is in, in an unconventional way, by preaching the gospel, by meeting needs in Acts chapter 6. He's chosen with Stephen to take care of people. He's chosen with Stephen to take care of the orphans, to take care of the widows for people that are in need. And that's how we're introduced to him in an unconventional way. And, and while he's taking care of these people and he's preaching, uh, the people are scattered. The church is being scattered because of persecution. But even in that persecution, the spirit was empowering. God used an unconventional thing like persecution and God is using an unconventional thing like a pandemic to spread the gospel. He used his spirit to give people boldness and he still is today to keep preaching, to live a life that is worthy of the call, live the life that is worthy of what Christ is telling us to do. And as Philip is going and he's doing this, he goes to this place called Samaria. And he's preaching still and he's meeting people's needs and people are getting healed physically, spiritually, mentally, whatever. Signs and wonders are following him, which is what the Bible says will follow the people who follow Christ to authenticate the message. In the midst of these signs and these wonders, Philip, he hears this voice. I can't speak low. Michael can. I can't. Or I would say something very low, but even then I can't even try right now. But it says, go down south to the road to Gaza, the dirt road to Gaza. So he went. He literally went. Something to note here is this. Number one is he heard. First he heard. Philip heard the word from the Lord. The angel of the Lord was speaking to him. That means that he was listening. That means that he had spent time with him. That means he understood what God was saying. I said this a few weeks ago in youth. So if you were there or watched it, you've heard it before. But we need sometimes to take God off of mute. Many times we muted God. I'm preaching to myself. A lot of times I mute God. And that's not good. He's still speaking today. Even if it's unconventional, in unconventional ways, he's God and he can do whatever he wants to do because he is our Lord. He is holy. He is righteous. He is above all things. But many times, even so, we've put him on mute. Have you ever tried to have a conversation with somebody and then you were either on mute or they were on mute and you're like, what in the world is happening? I, was, I said this in the first service too, but my cheeks are big. And I always mute when I'm trying to talk to Pastor Dan. And I'm like, I don't even, I'm sorry. I don't know why this happens. But it actually happens a lot, not just to Pastor Dan or me to Pastor Dan. But I'm always doing that. But the thing is, a lot of times we have God on mute, though. And we can't have a conversation if one of us is on mute. Many times we feel like we can't hear from God. But in reality, there could be good things. There could be bad things. There could be indifferent things. And we filled our life with so many things that take precedence over the presence and voice of God that we put God on mute without even knowing it sometimes. 
But Philip heard the voice of God. And it's time that we unmute the voice of God. It's time that, that we listen to what he has to say. And in some ways to do that are easy, right? They seem easy. But a lot of times we do get busy. But we can spend time with the Lord. We can read our Bible. We can just sit in his presence and sing the scriptures. Read them. Wait in the presence. That's the big one is waiting in the presence of God and blocking out every distraction that would come. My mind, it goes pretty fast. And I have to calm myself and just wait in the presence of the Lord and just talk to him and ask him to just be with me and, and help me and help me hear from him. When we do those things, we can hear from the voice of the Lord. So don't put God on mute. Philip heard God. He heard. The next thing that we see in this passage, number two, is he just didn't hear. He went. Philip went. This is what I imagine, okay? So Philip is preaching, and he's meeting people's needs. He's, he's giving them things. He's, he's praying for people, and he's, or he's hanging out with people, whatever. He's doing his daily thing that he always does, and he's talking to the Lord. And then the angel of the Lord says, go. And Philip literally went. He got up and he did something unconventional. He did something unconventional. Uh, Nike says to just do it. He did it. And he got up and went. But if it was me, I'm telling you right now, if I am running, you better be running with me because I do not run. I am not the flash. I do not do things like that. I do not run. I don't do anything like that. So he, he ran and he, he goes, I pick things up and put them down. But anyways, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I am not the flash, I'm not a superhero, I don't run fast. I like to watch that show, or used to watch that show a little while ago, but I don't do those things. But So I would have been like, why? Why am I to this place? Why am I going to the road? Am I going to have some type of persecution? Are my friends coming? Like, who is coming? Is Philip come? The other Philip coming? Is Thomas coming? Who is going to be there? But Philip went, and he, he did exactly what the Lord was telling him to do in the Great Commission as well, is to go. And as he was going, he runs into that Ethiopian eunuch who was somehow reading the book of Isaiah and somehow knew something about the Lord just a little bit. And Philip heard the Spirit of the Lord said, Go again. And he goes. But this time, like I said a second ago, he ran. He ran. He ran, and he, he just didn't let anything hold him back. He just ran after what the Lord was saying. But he was being obedient to the Spirit. He wasn't going to let anything hold him back. He was literally doing what the Spirit of God was telling him to do. He took off towards the chariot, and he knew that... He knew that he could trust the voice of the Lord because he had spent time with the Lord. He had, he had communed with the Lord. And, and what seemed like an unconventional thing to just get up and run to, this, to the road of Gaza turned out to be a supernatural encounter with the Spirit of God and a man who needed to have an encounter with the good news of Jesus Christ. And then as all of this is happening, Philip... Tells the man about Jesus and he proclaims the, the good news to him. And, and the eunuch saw a body of water as they're traveling. And he said, stop. Stop the chariot. Let me get out. What's holding me from being baptized? Another translation says, what's holding me from being baptized? And Philip says, nothing if you believe. He said, I believe. So the rest of the story goes that, that he went and they, they baptized him and or Philip baptized him they both went into the water and, and Philip was doing exactly what the Lord had told him to do which was to go and make disciples of every nation baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and that's literally what he was doing and as he's doing those things something so crazy and unconventional happened but it was so supernatural as well verse 39 says this when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of God took Philip and Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. How many of you have ever been teleported? <laughs> not yet, not yet. That's true, not yet. Uh, one time we were driving from Montana or Florida to Montana, and I asked the Lord to teleport us because 
I did not want to be in the car any longer. But that's what happened. That's what happened to Philip. He was taken away by the Spirit of God. He was taken away by the Spirit of God. And the eunuch comes up. This is what I imagine. They come up. Boom. He's in the water. And they come up. And Philip is not there. And he's there. And he's like, what in the world just happened? Did an alligator just eat him? Where is he at? I don't know. Maybe they don't have alligators. Crocodiles probably. That's what they have there. But um, if it was at home, it would have been an alligator. First off, don't get in the water at home. But anyways. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they have flesh-eating algae there. But that's neither here nor there, not a part of the sermon, Pastor Chad. Anyways, um, he was rejoicing. The eunuch got up and he was rejoicing. How many know this morning that when your life begins to change by the power of the Spirit and you've been regenerated by the power of the Spirit, you begin to rejoice. At all times you can rejoice because the joy of the Lord is what, like Nehemiah says, your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He begins to understand that he's a new creation now. And he begins to rejoice. Verse 40 says, Philip, however, appeared at Ashdod and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Number four today is he continued. He didn't stop. Philip did not stop. He did not stop being obedient to the Spirit, being obedient to the Great Commission and what the Spirit would have for him. He went around preaching the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is. He didn't settle for one victory. He didn't settle for one victory. He didn't settle for one experience. He continued. He kept proclaiming the good news of who Jesus was from town to town. And we should be this way too, that, that we should continue to strive to be obedient to the Spirit's leading, even if it's unconventional. We should be striving to, to have our lives be so obedient to what the Spirit is saying in regard to making disciples especially. Letting our lives reflect the glory of God and, and asking Him to give us creative ways to begin to disciple people and tell people about Jesus. Because you never know what's going to happen when you tell people about Jesus when you begin to take that first step of discipleship with them. That's what happened in the story. If you know world history or church history, you know that the kingdom of Ethiopia was a Christian nation all the way up until 1974 until a military coup flipped the government. But it started with a seed that was planted in the heart of the man. It started with a conversion experience that changed the whole nation because he was so close to one of the leaders. It was contagious, evidently. Just like the lady at the well, how people were saved because of this lady had just met Jesus. And she started telling people, that's unconventional. Jesus used that unconventional way to, to bring all kinds of people to know himself. The woman at the well. But we need to take it seriously to tell people about Jesus. Find creative and unconventional ways like trophies of grace, those things like that. By having some type of outreach night, by, by meeting people's needs, by just being the church everywhere that we go, by loving on people, by blessing people, by just, just telling them about Jesus Christ and him crucified and him risen and coming back. But the people of God should be so, so creative, the most creative people in the world because the spirit that dwells in us is the same spirit that created the world and created all things. So let us lean into that. Let's tap into the power of the Holy Spirit and tell people about Christ, even if it's unconventional. As I'm closing this morning and as Jenna would come and Michael would come as well, I want you to know that even if your story seems unconventional, your personal story seems unconventional, the gospel can be advanced because of that, that even if your life story seems like it cannot be redeemed or, or if your story is you don't know how to share the gospel or you feel like you can't share the gospel because you've been broken in the past or if you're in the middle of something right now, if your story looks different than you thought, it can be redeemed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. It can be redeemed. And if you're following Christ right here, right now, and you, you feel like you are, are struggling telling people about the good news 
of who Christ is. Let me tell you about an unconventional way that Jenna and I never thought that we would be sharing the gospel. When we came here, we were expecting our first baby, uh, Adeline May Hammondtree. Adeline May Hammondtree, and uh, we came here and we were able to have a great baby shower, and we were blessed so we were so blessed to be able to just have all those things and be, be blessed by the church and everything. And uh, we felt the blessing, we felt the love, we felt all those things. And uh, March 16th, we, we begin to start preparing even more for baby Addie to come. And she, she's, Jenna is 38 weeks pregnant. So we go to the doctor on March 16th and we see the doctor and everything's fine. The next, or that night we, we get home and Jenna begins to have some contractions and we start saying, yes, that means maybe Addie's gonna come today or tomorrow. So we start preparing a little bit. Jenna's bag is ready, all that. So we come to, come to the church and we start working. Jenna starts having some more contractions and things like that. And uh, it's getting worse and worse. I'm like, yes, Addie is coming right now, today. It's gonna be legit, like I say. We get to the hospital and we get checked in. Jenna's 38 and a half weeks pregnant. And Jenna has a fever a little bit and her blood pressure is fine. Then it was fine. And they strap a heart rate monitor on Jenna's tummy and they can't find Addie's heartbeat. And uh, they call some people in and they try to find her on the sonogram and the lady comes in, I'm sorry. And says, she says, I'm sorry, but something happened between yesterday and today. We can't find the heartbeat. To our baby, the one that we prayed for, the one we waited for. And I looked at one of the lady's eyes and it was like hopelessness. Um, and the Spirit of God just told me to sing. Told me to sing. So we sang songs like Tis So Sweet in the middle of the hospital in the middle of the hospital in the worst situation that could have ever been in my opinion that we never thought that we'd be sharing the gospel in the hospital other than rejoicing you know what I mean like the baby, the baby Addie comes and we rejoice and we tell them about this new baby this new life but it was the opposite we prayed I was praying and praying and praying and everybody across the country in Florida and Missouri and North Dakota everywhere praying and asking the Lord to just even at life let baby Addie cry let her be alive let him feel find the, the heartbeat and, and Jenna goes through labor like a champ she goes through labor and, and baby Addie comes out but she wasn't with us she was born into the presence of God on March 17th 2020 and and I begin to just cry and I'm about to cry now but I, I begin to just cry out to the Lord and just sing and just praise the Lord and I that's the only thing I knew how to do was to tell somebody about Jesus in this time because even though this is terrible we don't weep like other people weep we have a hope in Jesus Christ that one day we will be reunited because of what he has done and the faith that we have placed in Jesus Christ and that even now we can lean onto the, the rock that is higher than I. That we can lean on the anchor of our soul. It's an unconventional platform that I never thought would ever, ever be for us. But it, it, that's where we are. Let us think of some unconventional ways to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ even in the middle of the worst situation ever, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been going through a, a series, two series, we're one and the same basically in youth called the hashtag the struggle is real. I know things are, are real and I know things are hard, but we have a, a hope in Christ. We can hide in the secret place of the Most High, which was a, a lot about what we were talking about in youth, that, that no matter what, His faithfulness is our shield. That no matter what, we can rest in him. And if we can do it, other people can too. We can tell people about Jesus Christ, the one who left all glory 
And Hebrews says that he became lower than the angels for a time, but was exalted. He was exalted. He was raised to life. And now sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Intercession. That when we go through things, he's praying for us. And so, 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 so good. Unconventional means. Let's tell people about Jesus and unconventional platforms. But what I want to do is, a lot of people might not know how to sing this song that we're going to sing because they don't know Jesus. They've never heard about Jesus. They don't know if they want Jesus or not because they haven't heard. How can they believe without hearing? How can they believe without hearing? Let this song encourage you so that everybody can tell people about Jesus and can sing this song that I only want you, Lord. That's all I want. Sing it with me. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence, oh, I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave, oh, I'm not here for blessing. I'm not here for blessings, no. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Oh, I just want you. Oh, I just want you, God. Lord, we want everybody to be able to to sing that God that they just want you Lord you as each and every person in this place that is hearing my voice right now God online or wherever it is Lord Jesus use them to speak your truth use them God to speak the gospel Lord Jesus Christ Lord we thank you for the the the, the life changing gospel the things that you have done Lord we thank you for them you are high and you are lifted up in this place God be high and be lifted up in everything that we do Lord be exalted, Lord. Help us be a reflection of your glory, God. Help us take the great commission seriously and find and, and bridge the gap that is in unconventional ways, Jesus. Lord, I praise your holy and your righteous name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give us a passion to tell people about Jesus, to tell people about what you have done, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to tell you just one more thing. I'm done. I promise I went over and I didn't mean to. But at least it wasn't minutes like it was when I first started preaching, right? <laughs> um, we're going to be partnering with this, uh, with this organization called World Serve International. About giving with, uh, it's about giving people water. Uh, so that they can know the living water of Jesus Christ. It's a big, it's a big thing that we're going to do as a youth group. We can do it as a church. And that's going to be rolling out on Pentecost Sunday. No, be no better time is to roll out the Great Commission again on Pentecost Sunday because it is the Holy Spirit that gives us power to be the witnesses to all people because he's with us everywhere that we go. But be looking for that. We have some student spokespeople that are going to talk about it as well. But Pastor Dan, thank you so much. Each week at the end of the service, we've been reading the priestly blessing over you. And I'd like to read that again today as a prayer over you. But I'd also like you to reach your hands out to Pastor Chad and Jenna. And let's pray this over them. Let's do this together. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Yes, oh Lord, we give you praise. And Father, we do thank you for this message today. May we be like Philip and be attentive to your voice. May we obey your voice and be alert for opportunities to share the good news of salvation with others this week. And we give you the praise. Lord, for anyone here today that says, I need to put my faith in Jesus as my Savior, just tell him this morning. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I want to hear your voice afresh and new in my life. And I want to rejoice in you and help others hear the good news. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, it's so good to see you today. And what a blessing to come together. And we have an offering box in the back. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving during this time. You've just been awesome. We also want to encourage you to remember the missionaries we support. They still need our support. Things have been very different for them too. And uh, we have to do most of our visiting uh, following the guidelines and then if you want to linger longer feel free to hang out in the parking lot but it is so good to see you god bless you and let's share the good news of jesus wherever we go this week thank you for joining us for this worship service today if you prayed to receive christ contact us we want to help you grow in your walk with him you can contact us at our website cccbismarck.com or you can find us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Again, that's Capital Christian Center, Bismarck, North Dakota. God bless you.